So this is a pretty cool video clip and one I'm sure a lot of people wouldn't have any problem with uploading it in one of their videos. But I would never upload something like this in one of my videos knowing what I know now. The thing is there's so many different aspects to filmmaking that it's hard to know where you should even be looking in order to learn the things that you don't already know. And that's why in this video I want to share with you guys seven things that I would have absolutely have killed to have learned early on and I would have never even known about them. Just before we get into the tips, if you guys wanna go in depth into how you can go from beginner to pro, I have a full filmmaking course that's available and it's on discount right now, so you can check it out. It's in the top of the description if that is something you are interested in. Starting with the first thing and the clip I used as a demonstration in the intro of this video, let's talk about conversion LUTs. When I was starting out, I knew enough to know that I should be shooting in log footage so that I can get a flat picture profile and maintain a higher dynamic range. But something that I didn't know is when you are doing this, you should always be using a conversion LUT to take that log footage back to Rec. 709. So you can see like in this first clip, it looks cool and I added a color grade and tried to kind of bring those colors and contrast back into it, but it's not the same as actually using a conversion LUT to take that log footage to Rec. 709. If you want to get a conversion LUT, almost all of the camera manufacturers offer conversion LUTs for their specific log footage. I'm on a Sony, so I can jump onto the Sony website and download a conversion LUT from S-Log3 or S-Log2, whatever your preference is and then you can apply that conversion LUT onto your footage before you even start doing any of the color grading or color correction. Super important and it makes such a difference to how your footage actually looks. Tip two is gonna be a bit of a controversial one and one I feel like people seldomly discuss on the internet. <laughs> and that is to stage your scenes. You see, I think there's two very different ways that you can capture things. The one is to create a scene and the other is to capture an already existing scene. If you guys want to capture it, I think this is a really cool aspect of filmmaking and capturing things that would organically be happening is a way that you can often really capture things that are real and natural and that often gets translated onto camera and you can pick up on that. The problem is when you're not creating it and staging it, it's often a lot more challenging to get these high energy, cool scenes that you often want to include in something like an Instagram reel. If you're watching something like an Instagram reel and you see these crazy shots of like people running on the beach and dancing and laughing, it's kind of safe to say that the person with the camera, the person filming it, wasn't just running behind them and they happened to be like running down this beach, laughing with the sunset in the background and turning around and facing camera it's most likely that they staged this whole thing. And I think when beginners see these types of videos, they assume that someone just whipped out their camera and filmed what they were doing in that day or that little adventure, that little experience. But in reality, it's not. Most of the clips that you're seeing are completely staged. There's someone with the camera going, okay, let's get you running from here to here, doing this, performing this in that way and then doing that take and maybe even doing that take multiple times to get it to the point where they're happy with it. The other reason I really like this is because if you are trying to just capture your scenes, you're gonna have to film a lot more to make sure that you're actually getting some of the nice, high energy, cool setups that you want for your video to look the way you want it. If you're creating them, you can just set up the shots that you need, capture them, do a few takes, and most likely end up having those clips that you wanted that you had in your mind so that you can put that edit together. Both of these ways of filming are completely fine and I suggest doing a little mix of both, but don't be afraid to direct your friends and really get into that headspace of creating things that are gonna look really cool and translate well into film. Segwaying straight into tip three from creating your scenes instead of capturing them, I wanna talk a little bit about being uncomfortable, feeling cheesy, or just doing downright like awkward stuff on camera. Because just how when you watch those Instagram reels or you see other pro filmmakers creating these like amazing little pieces of content, it doesn't always feel like that in real life. Kind of, if you're on the beach and you're like running and dancing down the beach, it kind of feels awkward. You feel a bit stupid in real life. It doesn't always like feel the way that it does when you're watching it on an Instagram reel. But when you put up with that cheesiness and awkwardness in real life, 
when you put that onto your computer, you add some cool music to set the vibe, maybe you got some slow motion, a cool color grade, and it's cut with other clips that all like kind of work cohesively together, it all of a sudden doesn't feel that cringy anymore. And when you watch it back, you're like, wow, this actually looks so cool. And even knowing what you know and how cringy and weird it felt doing it on the beach, maybe in a public scene where other people were watching you guys like, running around on the beach being like influencers, it actually ends up looking really cool. And don't think that the pro filmmakers aren't experiencing this exact same thing. They just have enough experience and know enough that they know that that's just something that they have to do in order to get those clips. So go out there and get cringy, bro. It's fun, <laughs> just don't worry about it. <laughs> Tip four, we got probably hands down the number one thing that I see beginners doing. When you head out to record, people almost treat it like you're shooting on analog or some film or recording is like using up some scarce resource that you have to preserve. I think it's so important that when you are filming your scenes, just hit record and let it run. Just don't be afraid of recording super long clips, letting the scene play out and take place. I see beginners going like, okay, you ready? Hit record and then kind of mid action or before the thing even really ends, they've already hit stop and kind of ended that clip already. Then turning around or something else happening in that scene sometimes creates some of the most magical little parts of that entire clip. So don't be afraid to film really long clips, let them play out, capture everything. You can never use something you didn't record, but you can always delete it when you're in the edit. Just because you record it, it doesn't mean that you need to use it. Another thing to keep in mind is, when you do record these really long, drawn out clips, in reality, when you are editing, you're only gonna be using a tiny little section from them. So don't think that whole clip has to be perfect. There's some shakes in it, or you like changing angle, or you're not framing it properly. Don't stress. As the person you're filming continues to walk or whatever, you get another little gold nugget two second piece that you can take out and use in your final edit. You're never gonna regret having I've recorded too long, but I can't even tell you the amount of times that I've been looking at a clip and as it's about to get good, it hits stop and I'm like, damn, if I, if I just had a little bit more of that clip, it would have been like the perfect bid for what I needed. So hit record, let it play, roll it out. SD cards are cheap. Just get bigger SD cards if you're so worried about hitting stop every time on your record. Let it roll. Tip five. And this one's gonna be hard to wrap your head around and I know a lot of people don't like to do this, but here it is and it's not shooting everything at your lowest, most wide open aperture. You see, the thing is, is with cinematic videos, one of the first things you'll ever learn is shoot with the widest aperture to create a shallow depth of field and separate your subject from the background. And although this is really good advice and something that you guys should often stick to, it doesn't mean that you should kind of just set and forget put your lens on its widest aperture and never really think about it again. In a lot of cases, you don't always wanna be doing this, especially if you have a lens that's capable of opening up really wide to something like f1.2 or even f1.8. To create such a shallow depth of field in every scene sometimes creates a look that is less desirable than maybe just bumping that f-stop up to something like 3.5 or 5.6. If you're shooting on 1.2, even a shot like this, it could be such a shallow depth of field that my nose could be in focus, but my eyes are kind of not even that sharp anymore. And that's not something that you want. Maybe in another example, you're shooting someone walking around in the streets. You wanna include some of that background so that the viewer can see what kind of scene that that subject is actually in. If you're shooting at your lowest aperture, that subject is gonna be nice and crispy and isolated from the background, but the viewer can't even get an idea of what's going on in the background because it's all just this crazy bokeh and blurred out effect. So it's nice to use a combination of both. Sometimes get a little deeper focus, show that whole background maybe on your wider lenses, and then punch in for the details and capture those details at your shallowest depth of field so that you can isolate the details that you want to emphasize to the viewer. But just simply setting and forgetting, putting that aperture down to its lowest f-stop is not always gonna be most beneficial for you. And I know it's kind of a tricky one to get around because that is something that's drilled so hard within like this little filmmaking niche and everybody's first cinematic tip is shoot at the lowest aperture that you have available to you. I'm guilty of this too, but just use it with in moderation, just like everything else in filmmaking. Tip six is gonna be 
trying a little less to be a perfectionist about lighting conditions. And I'm guilty of this as well, even not as a beginner, but I feel like most filmmakers are guilty of this. But try not to be too much of a perfectionist when it comes to the perfect lighting conditions. Don't only go shoot when it's like amazing golden hour or the absolute perfectly clear day or whatever kind of idealistic lighting condition it is for you. Be open to the other ones because you can often create really interesting footage when you have to start getting creative with the light that you have at hand. Maybe it's midday light and you can start playing with some really interesting shadows that are being cast, hard lines and contrasting shadows. Maybe it's an overcast day, and you can have some really soft, nice, natural softbox light onto your model. You often come up with really, really interesting looks and it's also a nice way to kind of just challenge yourself to figure out how you can use the light that you have available to make the most of it. If you are shooting professional gigs, you often won't have the luxury of being like, oh, I'm only shooting at half an hour during sunrise and half an hour during sunset. The rest of the day and all of that, I'm just chilling, sitting around here doing nothing. Sometimes you have to just make do with what you have. So experimenting with this, getting a bit more experience with it and playing with it when you guys are just shooting things for fun is a great way to make sure that you have the skills and understanding of all light conditions so that you can apply them when some situation happens that you might need to. Tip seven, one of my favorite tips and one that I've mentioned in a few of my recent videos if you guys have been around for those ones and that is to shoot shadow side. You see, in filmmaking, I think often beginners think that the light source should be coming from behind camera, filling in the scene and lighting up whatever it is that they're filming. And although this is sometimes true, and it's definitely a stylistic preference that you guys can choose to do it that way, I think you can create some really interesting and dynamic shots by shooting shadow side. What I mean by this is, shooting into the light, and that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be facing your camera directly into the light. If it's the sun, for example, you can have it off to the side, and it is often a better option because you're not gonna get that extreme highlight blowout by having the actual sun directly in your frame. But what I do mean by this is that if you're shooting a subject, shooting onto the side of them that is the shadow and letting the light side be on the side furthest away from camera often creates much more depth in your shot and creates a much more interesting scene. Let's take these two shots for example. If I film this little street with the sun directly behind camera, it looks okay and it fills it all in, but by simply turning my camera around and looking into the light, now the street becomes the shadow side it creates a much more interesting shot with more depth, more diversity in that shot. There's some interesting light color casting happening onto the shot. It's much, much better in my opinion. So hopefully these seven tips helped you guys and you can apply some of them the next time you are out filming. Remember that if you wanna learn a whole bunch more about filmmaking, you can check my filmmaking course from beginner to pro. It's gonna go in depth into everything you guys need to know about how you can actually improve your videography. Other than that, hope you enjoyed this. Have fun, bye.